We're back on The Big Show. It's Alex talking to the big stars. And I always like to get people on from the big soaps. And let's face it, right now, there's no bigger soap than Emmerdale. James Hooten plays Sam Dingle and Eden Taylor Draper plays Belle. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Aren't you marvellous? I don't know how you do it. When I see the kids come on these shows and just give the award-winning performance, you're going to win a ton of awards, trust me. <laughs> thank you very much. You've already won a job lot of awards, haven't you? <laughs> what have you won so far? I've won quite a few. I won... When I did a big storyline and I won Best Spectacular Scene and then Best Young Performance and Best Young Actress and Best Young Actress. Yeah, whatever. Some <laughs> of us have never won anything, mate. <laughs> Does it make you a bit bitter? I mean, you've been in this business, I don't know, 50, 60 years now, James, uh, and you're still sat here awardless yeah. like myself. It's 70, 75 years, I think it is, <laughs> yeah. now that I've been in the business, uh, man and boy. Um, and no, no, it's great. I think it's great for the show if someone like Eden comes along and shows us how it's done. So yeah, it's terrific that she she come in and out of nowhere started winning all these awards. It's it was it's good good for our cabinet because we don't win too many awards as you might well know in comparison to the other soaps. So yeah, it's terrific. Any anything we'll take anything. Yeah. Tell me about the joy when the phone rings and they go, "Here, we want you to be on a soap, and it's Emmerdale, and you're going to be one of the big stars, and you're going to be a Dingle." Yeah, it was pretty amazing because I was only like really little. I was six at the time, so I just saw it as a like I had a job so I was like oh my word so I was yeah I was very impressed how old are you now? Um, I'm 13 in three days oh, wow. happy that. birthday thank you very much now when you're a big star and you're 13 and you have a birthday party what happens? well the thing is I don't like birthday parties so I'm just off out for a meal so I don't actually know what's going to happen but yeah I don't like big parties they annoy me oh, really what's annoying about them then? <sighs> I just don't like I just don't like them. I don't like people. You I don't like people. No, I do. I love people. <laughs> I love talking, but I just don't like birthday parties. It's kind of a bit embarrassing, isn't it, when yeah. all those people are around you? It's like people just give you loads of compliments. You're just like, oh, thank you, go away. So, yeah, I like going out for meals, so that's what I'm doing. Where do I take you? Italian, Chinese, Indian? <gasps> you would have to take me to an Italian, because my favourite food is pizza. So, yeah, you'd have to take me now. <laughs> are we talking Pizza Hut or one of the proper pizzas? No, like a pizza pizza, like the best pizza in the world pizza. Thin crust or one of those thick things? Thin. Like a proper pizza has to be thin. Yep. Perfect. Girl after my own heart. You thick or thin? Medium. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know. You know, it's some days you want a thick crust. Yeah. Some days you want a thin crust. Some, some days you want cheese in the, in the actual <laughs> yes. makeup of the dough that's around the outside. No, I don't get that, that cheese thing around the edge. Because it's not actual cheese. It just tastes like plastic. See, I don't understand that. Maybe it is plastic. Yeah. James, you're a bit strange. Oh, yeah, most definitely. Well, I am from Nottingham, so you, what do you expect? I want to talk to you about this Nottingham boy here as well. I'm from Gedling, you're oh, yeah. from... Oh, Carlton, just oh. up the road. I think Frank Weldon hammered Gedling Comp in a fight once when I was at school there. Does that seem to make sense? From yeah, what? you were harder than us, but you ended up being burnt down, which is probably the best thing for you. Yeah, it was a young lad burnt in school down. And yeah. it was I think very he did £100,000 worth of improvements, didn't it? <laughs> Just by burning it down, you're probably right. It's a real shame, though, because there's a lot of... Well, I mean, it was, it was, it was a 60s sort of prefab build, um, so it wasn't the most attractive school in the world, but it was my school, and I had a lot of really fond memories there, and we had a terrific um, drama department and theatre, and it's such a shame that that place, you know, it was raised to the ground. But obviously there's been a um, huge improvement, investment and updating the building and everything. I've, I've been and seen the outside of it since it's been rebuilt. So I think it's, it's vastly improved in the end. So. I know there's a lot of Chinese whispers when you live in the same place as someone who's famous. But I reckon my grand lived at least one or two roads away from yours, which was oh, Bentink Road, somewhere like that. And your grandma lived somewhere near there. Uh, Bentink Road. Where, remind me whereabouts Bentink well, Road. If you go That's up Fraser Road. Square from where you were. Oh, so yeah. So Bentink's around Fra Fraser Crescent, Fraser Square and all that. Yeah, just near, near Valley Road and all That's that. It. Yeah. Yeah, OK. I don't think this will mean anything to my audience, but I don't care because it's all about me and you. Well, yeah, we're talking about our old stomping ground, aren't we? <laughs> Even do you care about what we're talking about? I don't have a clue what you're on about, <laughs> so you're just both freaks is how I see it. Do you wish we'd just move on and talk about you? Yeah, just go away, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we want a bit of Nottingham history, don't we? That's what we're... Yeah. <laughs> but now you're living in Leeds and so am I, so we've got another thing in common. There you go, yeah. I think, uh, yeah, Leeds is a terrific city, obviously. I found it to be extremely friendly in comparison to some of the old stomping grounds of, of uh, my youth in Nottingham so uh, I, I think uh, very different cities very different I'll ask you both the same question when your mates find out you're going to be on a soap how do they react? 
they couldn't believe it. They were like, oh my God, my friend's on Emmerdale. But yeah, there was really nice about it, which is really good. Now, you're 13. Are you married yet? Yes, I am. I'm married and I've divorced three <laughs> times. Just that tell you. And how does it work? Because you must still be at school technically, but you're not because you're in a soap. Well, I go to school when I can. And when I'm not, then I tutor when I'm filming. That so. sounds like great stuff because you can just sit in the cafeteria gossiping with people like James and yeah. just have a ball. Yeah, it's great. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> have you learned anything since you've been in Emmerdale? I have. I have improved so much because in tutoring, it's one to one. So I learn a lot more than I do at school, but I still love school. So, yeah. And your mates, they don't mind the fact that you get to have 50% off and, and go and do showbiz the rest of the time? Well, they're a bit like, oh my God, why do you get to miss school? But then I explain to them that it's very hard <laughs> and then they understand. Were you born a character? Because, I mean, even on the show and sat here, it's very clear you've got a huge personality and so much to say for yourself. You can't betray that, can you? No, it's because of my mum. My mum is the most... Oh, she won't stop talking. It's ridiculous. <laughs> She'll be on the phone. Last night, she was on the phone for four hours to her mum. Four hours. <laughs> and I got a bath, I'd done my hair, everything. I was like, mum, get off the phone. So I just get it from my mum. <laughs> is she always like this? Um, yeah, she, she's an outgoing girl, you know. And her mum does like a nice chat. It has to be said, yes. Is it a bit aggravating? I mean, she finds it annoying. Four hours is a long time to talk. No guy in the world would be on the phone to their mum or anybody else for four hours. It depends who's paying the bill, doesn't it? If if they're calling in, then it's all right. Listen, I do a radio show. It's only three hours long. She did a radio show plus another bit of another one. Exactly. It's not right. She'd be after your job, (laughs) isn't it? Yeah. So are you living in Leeds as well now? Yes, I am in... I'm in the very posh part. I'm in (laughs) Harewood. Very so nice. No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and what do you do then? Where do you go to eat? Do you go into town or do you stay local to, to go out and have fun? I go to Harrogate. I love Harrogate, so yeah, that's where I go. Oh, really? We were just talking to Emma earlier. She lives in Harrogate. Yeah, she does. Yeah, I do like Harrogate. Mm. And in terms of the camaraderie of the team, do you have to make it fun and make sure you are friends? Because it'd be pretty miserable if you hated everybody. I think it just, just so happens that the Dingles have come together completely organically you know we've just we've been cast completely separate of one another but we've we've come together in this family and created a family family unit um and i think there's there's a lot of similarities between us generally speaking uh, which is is great because we, we all seem to get on so well um and i don't think you can cast that if you were trying to cast a, 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 a family as diverse as the dingles are in their makeup and you were trying to create a certain you know, chemistry between the, 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 the actors and the characters, it would be extremely hard to do that. It's just simply by chance, I think, that we've all managed to come together into this family and we all sort of get on, have a good crack on set and, you know, try and enjoy ourselves while we do the job. So I think it's, it's very fortunate that we've got the opportunity to have a good working um, relationship with each other. You have some great singers in the programme. Does that come naturally to you now, just delivering them and making sure they hit home as they do through the telly? Or do you have to... Zingers, you know, great lines. Are we talking about KFC? (laughs) (laughs) I mean, yeah, I once had a zinger towel burger meal. Um, Never had a zinger? No, never had a zinger. I only like popcorn chicken. I I love... love Oh, and the gravy, that's the best. I'm a pieces man myself. Three pieces of fries. I've had the boneless bucket. Ever had the boneless bucket? No, I've never had the boneless bucket. (laughs) I've had the boneless bucket. Honestly, that's nice. Twelve ninety nine. all that (laughs) chicken. Look at the size of it. There's no problem. It's a pot of beans. It's ridiculous. (laughs) Who wants that many baked beans? Honestly. You could have a swim in it, couldn't you? How do your mates react then when you're one of these showbiz tarts on the telly? I don't like this showbiz tarts on the telly lot. We're going to have to calm that kind of thing down. Um, now my, my mates have always been supportive of me. I mean, I, I was working as a teenager. Um, I wasn't. You know, I didn't start in the business as, as young as Eden has done. But I started um, as a 13-year-old doing bits of theatre and telly. So my mates at school were sort of used to me going along that route, and, and uh, they've always, you know, they've always supported what I've done and come and seen things that I've done. You know, if, if I've been in films or whatnot, and yeah, it's, it's been good. Your, your mates are your mates whatever you do, aren't they? So, you know, they've, they've always been supportive to me. Eden's going to contradict everything I've just said because you're sat here and a big star in Young. But for us in Nottingham, Central TV had a great workshop where you could get That's into right. TV through that. That's all gone now. Is it yeah, tough it's now been, to get a gig? It, it's tougher than it was. Obviously, Central Studios shut down on Lenton Lane a long time ago and it, it was a real um, shame because we, we made so much 
interesting drama was made there. There was news um, game shows that were that were produced and filmed there. So it brought a lot of work to the the central region, in in, in particular Nottingham. I mean, the, the central workshop still is going strong in Knotts under Ian Smith, who, who ran it many years ago. Um, the funding is more difficult to come by. Um, I think it's partly funded by the BBC and and uh, ITV now, and they, they, unfortunately they do have to sometimes charge some of the kids to come along to it but it's still going strong still got a terrific reputation and people are still getting cast in, in things left right and centre from it and there's still people of my age I mean, I'm 37 now there's people in my era and older that are still working professionally in the business and have made it their career so I think the legacy of the workshop is you know still going strong Unfortunately, it was the, the Birmingham branch of the group shut down, and there was also um, a Leeds branch, which I think Eden went to for a while when it was up here. But that, unfortunately, they had to close down because of um, monetary constraints. But the Nottingham workshop is still going. Eden, James, I'm going to impress you now. A guy who came out there was one of my best mates at school, Adam Roper, who played Woof. Do you remember Woof on the oh, telly, the guy who turned into the dog? No. Before her time, wasn't it? Well, I mean, it? come on, this is one of the greatest children's programmes ever. This is years ago, though, isn't it? We're talking about 20 years ago, Wolf. I, I, I remember yeah, Adam. And I... I'm 107, so... Yeah. <laughs> I, did, I did a walk-on on Wolf once, and Nigel Havers had to throw me up against the wall. <laughs> and I had to have all back padding on and, and all sorts for him to do that. Adam was working on the show at the time, and um, I know he, he still works in and around Nottingham. Now he's not in, in the acting game anymore. Um, he served me dinner the other day. How depressing yeah, is that? Toby Carvery, isn't he? Yeah, the yeah, manager of the Toby Carvery. I've seen him a few times, yeah. Yeah, it's a good one there. I used to go in with my mum um, when she was still it gets alive. me down, though, because I think I could be him in a few weeks' time. That's what worries me about my career. One bad show, it could all be over, and I could be serving somebody a ham dinner. Well, it doesn't matter what you're doing in life, does it, as long as you're happy. He seems to be happy in his, in his chosen path. I don't think acting was necessarily what he wanted to do as a career, so he's, you know, he's gone a different route. But yeah, I'm like you, and take a good message from me and James. We've never done a day work in our lives have we you know talking for a living you, you try and show yourself, off yourself mate <laughs> some of us have had proper jobs as well <laughs> before we go congratulations on being you I mean you're such a big star and you're going to go on to greatness what's next are you in this as long as I'll have you or are you going to go on and go to Hollywood or something oh, I don't know I don't know what I want to do so I'll do I don't know I want to try everything mm. so and the family around you, the Dingles in the, in the show, are they fun to be with? Yes, they're really fun, except James. He's just an absolute spoils boy. He's awful. <laughs> no, no, no. It's really good. Yeah, we have loads of laughs on that. We get told off because we laugh that much. Oh, you mustn't do that. You mustn't. You can't corpse because there isn't time to redo it, is there? Well, you know, it's, uh, it's the, the, the time that we have to actually make the show you know is, is getting less and less it's a very busy schedule but th there's always time for a bit of fun on set and you've got to have it because otherwise you wouldn't be human would you it's not like a proper job though you can't tell no, me you can't, I can't tell you it's like a proper grafter's job you know but um, there's pros and cons to every job isn't there so you know it's, it's not for everybody but it's good it's good for us James, so nice to meet you. To think that we were brought up, you know, just a few hundred yards from each other. Yeah. But you've reached greatness. Look at me, sat here talking nonsense on the one. I don't, I don't know about greatness. We're only on a soap. You're a yeah. dingle, for Christ's sake. What more can you do? Well, yeah, what more could you ask for? Yeah, <laughs> we're allowed to not wash. Do you like but, this uh, new DVD, by the way? Is it good? Yeah, it's really good. It's a good, you need to, have you seen it? No, I haven't. They won't give me a coffee. Oh, no, you need to see it. It's really good. All right. I'm going to go home and see it as soon as they release it because the thing is I couldn't make it early because I was on the wireless talking and then I got here and they won't give me a copy because it's so important they won't give us a copy either I don't, I don't know what's <laughs> wrong with them I think they've been stingy today but hopefully we'll get one at some point really but nice to see you both uh, nice to meet you cheers Eden Taylor Draper lovely to meet you Belle in uh, Emma Dart and such a great star and you're going to be uh, fabulous come on the show again won't you I will definitely and Jameson good to talk to you mate thank you very much